This is something I've really been thinking about a lot over this last year, year and a half is this idea that, you know, kids can be good at every subject that they are in school, that they do in school. I don't agree. I just don't agree. I, I don't think that every kid can be good at science. I don't think every kid could be good at math. And it's not that they don't have the ability. It's just that maybe they don't have the passion or the want to do it. Uh, I actually was never good at science, nor do I care. And I, it's not that I don't think science is really important, um, but I just know there's, there's people that will do that. And I think a lot of times what we focus on is getting kids, all of them good at the same thing, as opposed to helping kids become good at something. And those are different things, right? Do we help develop the passions and strengths of our students? And do we also give them the opportunity to expose them to new ideas, right? Now, that all being said, I, I, I don't think that if you're, if you're not going to be a scientist, that science class should be excruciating or the same with math. I think that there's ways that we can really bring out the best in our kids. We can get them excited about the subjects. And we want them to do the best that they possibly can. But I think that we just have people that do different things in our world. And that's okay. And I think that's what makes the world unique is that we all have different talents and gifts. And maybe that's a controversial thing that I said. But I think it's just better. The world is better that way. I think the world is better when we have kids knowing they, they're unique and they have individual abilities, individual gifts, and that they don't have to love everything. There's, uh, I remember saying that, you know, I'm not a big fan of fiction and a bunch of teachers saying to me, how dare you say that? You're a teacher. And I said, well, did you play sports? And they're like, no. I said, well, that's really benefited me in my entire education. I'm glad I had that opportunity. And so I don't judge you that you didn't play sports. So I hope that you don't judge me that I'm not a big fan of fiction. I love, but I do love reading. I love nonfiction. And that's just been always been my jam. And it goes back to that idea of we, we can tap in and we can make the experiences for our kids really awesome, you know, even in the classes where they struggle and maybe that they don't have a passion for. And I think sometimes when they just see that we have a passion for that and we have an excitement for the work that we actually do, it might not make them passionate about that subject, but seeing how exciting it is to be about passionate about something. And that's why I really enjoyed this conversation with Jeannie Lazzarini. Uh, she has a, a an excitement for math, and math was not a struggle uh, a subject that I I did well in at the high school level. Elementary was pretty good, high school not so good. And talking to her, she got me excited about this, you know. And not necessarily I'm going to be a mathematician, but the idea that you know this there's a lot of uh, overlap in the, our world today and how we connect and and what we can do in math class. And I think you know developing that where kids have these really good experiences in these classes, whether they go on to to you know, be scholars in the field that we're teaching is not the point. It's that they have that opportunity to to feel that excitement, to feel that passion, and we help them to to become really good at something. And so it was a great conversation. I really enjoyed talking to Jeannie. She has such an enthusiasm. I've been connecting with her year, years over email. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And I'm so blessed today to have Jeannie Lazzarini uh, on the podcast. Her and I have been connecting for a long time via email. Uh, we've had lots of great conversations and she, I, I feel like uh, she's like a huge, you know, someone who just cheers for me for the work that I do. But I, I also do. I also know there's no <laughs> way I can just tell by your personality. I'm not the only person you do that. And I just feel oh. uh, I, we, we need... <laughs> We need a ton of that in education. So Jeannie has a, a ton of experience in different fields, a real passion for mathematics. And I hope we get to dig into that today. But Jeannie, if you could just kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and kind of how you got to that point. Okay. Um, I'm Jeannie Lazzarini. Um, I'm I'm not teaching in the classroom right now, but I'm working with some um, other mathematicians on always and trying to find ways to improve mathematics. I came from a background of being very shy and very quiet and kind of introverted and learned later in life that I really kind of didn't want to be that way. I wanted to get out there and be one of the popular kids or whatever, but I found also I, I had such a passion for math and I really enjoyed it. And I got that from some teachers. And it's funny because I felt like that wasn't a way to become popular is to say you're a girl that likes math. So, so it was really a, a dichotomy for a while there, but I, I ended up going ahead and pursuing that. I started as an English major in college because I love mm. to write. Um, I also taught myself uh, classical piano. 
I didn't, my parents could not afford lessons. So I learned how to read notes on my own and everything. And I just decided to st stick with it. And um, I love that. And so math and music go together a lot. Um, I always love to make things. I'm very, you know, art, artsy and all that. And I, I've done a lot of, uh, in my life, I've done stained glass for our house. We have an old Victorian, I've all the stained glass and etched glass I've done. And mm -hmm. also, uh, calligraphy. And uh, believe it or not, when I was at UC Davis, in my master's program, I actually taught a scrimshaw class because at the time they offered that and uh, with big elephant tusks. So I'd learned how to etch on scrimshaw. Yeah, it's really weird. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so I've done, but a lot of things like that and then design. And then with this house I became a, a West Coast editor for Victorian Home Magazine. I've been on all kinds of boards uh, and mm. uh, for historic preservation and so forth. And our house has been on HGTV, If Walls oh, Could Talk so cool. and all that. Yeah, it's neat. We won a National Trust Award too for interior design and all that. So. Uh, but we did it all ourselves. And um, a lot of that came back with me later in the classroom. Right. And I really just, uh, and then one of my sons is an animator for, uh, and a cinematographer for Blizzard Entertainment. So he always, my boys, I have two boys, uh, 18 like, months apart. Like a gaming company? Is that, yes. Is, oh, that oh, yeah. Is he's cool. in charge of Overwatch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And his, uh, my other son is a structural engineer. So really into math with, uh, structural engineering. I never flashcard the kids. We just explored. We were always having fun outside, building things, doing things, had a garden, you know, whatever it was, it was like, we were into just having fun and then discovering things, you know, and I think that that's natural inquiry is the way to learn, uh, and to encourage that we need people to encourage that, that childhood sense of wonder right. that we're all born with that, you know, and I feel that way too. I honestly feel there's no such thing as having a left brain, right brain thing. So I feel that, uh, any, everybody has the ability to learn math. Um, a lot of people don't like it, I think, cause they might've had teachers that just weren't so great or their parents didn't like it or people they knew in their, their, you know, community. It's very common to say, I hate math. And mm -hmm. a lot of negativity. And, and it's also been taught to be very uh, structured, very organized. How fast you go is more important than whatever and memorization and all that. And to me, that's not fun. Right. I wouldn't want to learn that way. So uh, for me, it's always been different. You're really going to have fun. We're going to be learning do things. You, do, together. You think, do you think that we that we're taught to learn to hate math? I think the way it's been taught has... Mm -hmm led to that a lot because it's, mm -hmm. it's time test. It's, uh, you know, a lot of memorization, a lot of, uh, I've had, I've taught teachers too. I used to work for the resource area for teaching mm. for nine years as their math specialist and American Institute of Mathematics with teachers and students. And at, I've done conferences as well, with teachers. And I have found some that are really stuck in their way. They really want to, you know, mm. you can't count on your fingers, they say, because that's just really, you know, that's wrong. You've got to memorize the whatever. And I go, what's wrong with counting on your fingers? Right. I mean, it's fine. I mean, there's, if that helped you, then why not? You know, so there's different techniques that I think need to be revamped. And uh, a lot of people I know, like Joe Bowler and so forth, are doing mm. a lot of work in this field. I really applaud them and you too, uh, in the educational field and just encouraging people to uh, really think outside the box or inside the box, which right. way should I go with you? Right, right, right. <laughs> well, and, I'm going to ask you this question, Jeannie, because yeah. um, I actually, like, I'm curious what you think of this. So when you said counting on your fingers, I actually, <laughs> to this day, I always count on my fingers, but I use a method taught by my grade three teacher, Cindy Penrose, called Chisenbop, where you can count a hundred on your fingers. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, I've, something I use like it, that. I use it all of the time. And it, it is like, it is literally one of my, I got, I honestly, I, there's, I, out of all the things I learned in school, that is one thing that I use all of the time, Chisenbop, right? And yeah. like the the one thing I was thinking, you know, and like maybe this is going to turn into math therapy for me, kind of going through. The <laughs> yeah, probably. I actually loved. I actually loved the memorization. I love the time. I love. We did times tables. Yeah, um, I when did we were, too. When we did like you know our, we go up to the board and our teacher would say nine times seven, and I would like write it first. And we <laughs> like whoever like wrote it first stayed in the game until there was a champion, right? And I yeah. love that stuff, the memorization. And I, from kindergarten to grade eight, I was considered so so good at math right I, I was like one of the top students in in math and then in grade nine um i 
I, I almost failed the class and I struggled throughout the process. And I, and like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about this process and I'm thinking about, um, and, and what your thoughts are on this, because I felt that it be like the, a lot of the stuff that we were teaching was memorization was that. And then as soon as it got to, Hey, you have to think about this and yes. there's like some problem. Then I was like, no, I, I, I'm out. Yeah. It, yeah. It's like, in, as soon as it doesn't just come to me, yeah. then I struggle. Yeah. And so like, is that like, is that what happened there? Because like, it was just, it was surreal. Yeah. How much I loved math in grade eight and how much, and not like, I love I'll be honest with you. I loved it because I was really good at it. Yeah. I, I, like, that's why I loved it. You're probably and then being... night, I hated it because yeah. it was just, it was like, I didn't understand anything anymore. And I like, what do you think happened there? I think maybe, uh, did you feel like you were getting positive, uh, reinforcement every time you won? You know, that's, that's, well, kind of- it, was, it was, it wasn't, it just, I could, it was like, it was like just something totally different. Yeah. Like it was like a, you know, I think, uh, we, we went from like numeracy and then we went into more like, you know, uh, like oh, algebra, yeah. geometry and stuff like that. And it was just like, I don't, I don't understand anything anymore. Right. Like, and I felt like, oh, right. like. I got to think this stuff out. Right. I, I was the kid notorious for, uh, Hey, you need to show your work. I'm like, well, I know the answer. Why don't you show my work? Yeah. Yeah. I already yeah. know how to do it. So it's just yeah. coming to me. And then once I actually had to show my work because I didn't know what I was doing, I was like, I don't want to show my work. I don't know what to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? I, I've had teachers like that and, and experiences like that. And also showing your work sometimes comes down to being either right or wrong, apparently. Right. Right. According to what the teacher wants. And it's like, there's several ways to answer a question. Right. There's not just right. one. And I feel like uh, taking an open mind about it is really helpful to encouraging people to uh, really investigate further what is going on with the math. A sense right. of number is really important mm -hmm. and a sense of why these things work and how they relate come better into focus, I think, when you have actual experiments and, and, mm -hmm. and things that you're doing that you see how it works um, and with really good analogies and so forth. So I, I find a lot of, a lot of people really, re in my experience, that's really been a, a very positive thing is to have mm -hmm. beyond memorization because I, I did that too. I remember in yeah. calculus classes, memorizing formulas. I memorized this, this really detailed one. I was, I was, I was out long before the calculus classes. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I'm out. I'm done with this. Well, I aced it and everybody else failed it and the teacher made a big deal, but I really to this day can't tell you what I did. You know, I really don't know what it was about. I just memorized it. And that isn't worth it. You know, it's like if mm -hmm. you don't know why it's used or how to use it and how to apply it, if you suddenly get a position and you've got to use something, you can't just go, well, right. let me go remember that formula. So it's really important to um you know, it's kind of like any subject to really to mm -hmm. gain a, an appreciation for it and to love it. It's to understand why you use it. Why in the first place do you even have it? Why, why did we ever come mm. up with numbers? What, is, what good are numbers? Mm. And then what good are formulas? And why do we have these shortcuts called formulas to help us get to something right. else? So I have a, a activity I used to do, for instance, with functions and um, seeing how they really relate. Uh, it's called dive into square pools. And it was like, you'd mm. have these square pools with the, you know, the inside of the pool would be a square, you know, just blue. Right. And the outer edge would be made out of squares that framed it. And then you keep the first pool be, you know, with one center and then they have so many squares around the edge. And then you look at the second right. one and it have to be always a square. So you'd have four next time inside the center and so forth. And you see this relationship and it's like, I, I would have the kids just build these. And after a while, yeah. it's like, yeah, what would you think the hundredth pool would look like? You know, do you have to keep building them? Do you see anything that's going on? And mm -hmm. that's the patterns and, the, and that's where algebra comes in. Cause that's why, mm -hmm you need to have that, you know, cause it's sort of like, it's a, a shortcut way to get to your answers by right. having these formulas, but you understand why now, because you don't want to be sitting there all day long measuring right. things out and all that. Well, I was so, going to, I was going to ask you this genie, like their, your, your passion for like <laughs> interior design. Is that, yeah. am I, is that correct? And, yeah. and your, and I don't know if I'm using the right terminology. Victorian. Sorry. Yeah, Victorian design, right? Yeah. So when you're talking about Victorian design, how I, I would love to know the correlation between your work in math and that. Like, is there a correlation? Is there some overlap between the two? I um, wish I could show you a picture right now. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, when it comes to wallpaper, for instance, our house has, I can't show you here, but um, there's right. different rooms where the ceilings are all wallpapered and there's the free section and then there's hmm. the fill. There's a dado. It's like a, like a section down below. So they would have these uh, ways of splitting up the wall space and so forth. But uh, there, Bradbury and Bradbury wallpapers are hand silk screen wallpapers and they're beautiful. They're from period designs. Mm -hmm. We have them throughout the house. And what you need is uh, each roll, each pattern, you cut and paste into different right. patterns together. So it's like a, a collage after a while. The ceilings are amazing and everything uh, because they're they're put together. But I, I would bring that wallpaper into my classroom and right. we try to make miniature walls. And how would you, you know, how much would you need to take off a roll in order to create this for a particular sized room right. and, and, the, and then how would you piece it together and how would you make it look like it's centered? And there's a lot of math involved, believe me, there right. is. And uh, so that was one example. I mean, there's, then I I've done a lot of stained glass too. So that too, when you piece right. together something or, or quilting would be the same idea, you know, you, you have to really think about how things are going to butt together and how you're yeah. going to have those designs come together. And throughout history, um, there's, I, I did a whole unit on native American, Indian art, African mm -hmm. art, uh, Jap Japanese art and, uh, mm -hmm you know, all kinds of art. And why does it look familiar to you? But why does it also like you can say, okay, that's Japanese where that's right. Chinese and that's, or that's African, whatever. And the, but everybody's used um, geometric forms and so forth to create beautiful art and it had to be put together. And it's like, you know, there's a lot of math involved with all that. Yeah. When you, when you talk about this, like I, I, I think for uh, a, a lot of the connections that you're making right now, I, I think that is probably one of the reasons why, you know, students were excited to take math through class is because you make those connections, right? Whereas, yeah. you know, it, it, to me, it was just, it was just calculations that had nothing to do with anything, right? Yeah. And I think that connection was lost there. And I and, um, just kind of want to talk about this. Uh, I know you did a, a course with uh, my, my good friend, Dr. Katie Novak, who, oh, yes. uh, who is an absolutely uh, amazing educator, amazing oh, yes. family person, yeah. just a very good friend of mine. And as much as I don't like her knowing this, I love her to pieces, right? <laughs> Saying that out loud because like, she is my she is my annoying She's little wonderful. sister, and she like proudly is that. Um, I know you did a course with her. Um, yes, with the intersection of universal design for learning and, and mathematics. Can you tell us a little bit about and the the course is sure. linked down below. Uh, in this oh, good. For anyone that's interested, so um, can you just tell people a little bit, you know, about that course, what it is, and, yeah. and what they can expect to learn from that. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's um, self-paced. You can find it on our website yeah. and uh, it counts for 30 units of education credits. And if you take the final at the end, it also gets additional credits as well. Okay. And also, yeah. So um, it's separated into seven modules. Each one talks about middle school mathematics, a certain particular standard area like functions or variables or expressions and and all these different areas that I got into and how um, to teach those things using UDL, universal right. design for language and um, for learning, I'm sorry. And uh, how you use that to uh, incorporate the atmosphere in the classroom to hmm. get students excited about learning and learning right. what their subjects are. And I give a lot of advanced uh, uh, advice rather, sorry, uh, from different things I've done in the classroom with those fields. For instance, um, I love to draw. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I did uh, going into geometry is I would draw a picture of an oak tree and uh, have these acorns falling from it and the ground and this little thing coming out of the ground. So I, at the beginning class, it's a prompt to see if they could guess what we're going to talk about today. And it's, of course, Finally, they go, oh, there's a tree coming out of the bottom there. And I go, yeah. And the acorn said, gee, I'm a tree. And that was the, you know, so right. uh, crazy things like that. But anyway, and then I'd set the stage for different ways to um, work with vocabulary and work with inclusiveness and um, lots of great advice in there about different ways to um, include uh, students self uh, voice and yeah. self exploration as well. And to work as a team and, and collaborate and so forth. It really worked for me all these years. It's been 30 plus years. I'm not going to tell you how many. 
<laughs> quite a few. <laughs> Actually, it's 42 now. So oh, wow, good uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't believe it. But uh, and I've taught all levels and it's been um, always very successful for me. And for my students, I know for sure they, they come back to me in life and say, you know, they, some of them went on to teach math afterwards because they loved right. it so much. And yet uh, it they always enjoyed the class. Yeah, the classes that I did because they were involved. They were excited. They had opportunities to express themselves in different right. ways, all of that. And that comes up in this course that I wrote. So it's, That's it's, awesome. um, yeah, I think it's, it's really, you know, I put my heart and soul into it. And so hopefully <laughs> you get well, some yeah, and I know, ideas. I know Katie, I know Katie appreciates all that too. So I'm glad that oh. you, you, you two got to work together. So I'm going to ask you. you this last question. And I know you have this passion and excitement uh, for math and you want students to feel that. So if you can give like one piece of advice to, you know, somebody who teaches math right now, how, how can they get, you know, students excited for that? How, like, how do they, how do they get through that process? And I, I like, I'm going to tell you, like, I don't teach math, but I'm like curious in this answer to see, cause you know, I struggle with it and I, you know, it was not, it was something I dreaded and I actually, I still have, I'll be honest, I have dreams of like, <laughs> like, oh my God, I have like a math test I didn't do. And like, like, I feel like I'm skipping math class. Like, I'm, oh like, yeah. I'm 47 years old. And I, uh, <laughs> we're this right I, like still have those nightmares about math right? so, so i'm curious about yeah. this you know as a you know former student a, a teacher and a, and a dad of kids going into class so what what would be that one piece of advice you give to, to teachers relax mm -hmm. be a model for your you know model what you preach you know so uh, make mistakes let them know you make mistakes but in the meantime have fun Make it fun and let them know you want to have fun. They're not here to teach and have a lousy time. You're all going to be having fun learning this. And right. there's different techniques and keep your sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I think that helps a lot. Um, know your subjects, though. Really know your subjects. Mm -hmm. If you don't know it well, then be honest about it and, and look it up and come back the next day or something. Um, like I said, not we can't know everything, but still... Um, you know, be honest, be open, be truthful, right. model what you want them to be for you. Mm -hmm. And you're also modeling for them how to be good citizens, be responsible students, you know, um, right. and that's so important because I've been in classes where you're just another number in the class. You're not, right. you know, and to me, you're not every single one of my students. I remember I really like them as people and i always was there for them mm -hmm. and i feel like that compassion that they understand is coming through really helps them want to go the extra yard or so right. uh, to right. try really hard and it always worked it always worked and i've had i've had some challenges i really have and uh I've stayed after school sometimes to talk to some students right. like, you know, okay, I know you're having a hard time. Tell me what's going on. How can I help? Um, you know, and things like that. And that always helped a lot. So. Yeah. And yeah. Like, like I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about um, the classrooms I struggled in the most were uh, science and math. And, mm -hmm. and then I thought about, okay, like when, when did I like those most? And I, I think it was, uh, you know, when you talk about the notion of relaxing, I think it was when, uh, I know this is maybe the terrible advice, but some <laughs> teacher is kind of just like, okay, look, this guy is not going to be a scientist and, uh, you know, but I'm going to try to get him as enthusiastic and have fun in this class where yeah. he's going to get through this because this part, like I, I, I'm like this big, I don't believe every kid has to be good at science. I don't believe every kid yeah. has to be good at math. But I think they should have a good experience in those classrooms, right? right. And I think, and I, I think it's, right. I think it's just like we want kids to be all good at something, not at the same thing. And I think that right. is really important to me. And so, um, right. you know, I, I could tell by your enthusiasm for this <laughs> and your enthusiasm for life and how you bring in uh, the intersection of those things. I think it's really powerful. So, Jeannie, it was just, it was awesome to sit down with you. Oh, you too. To meet you and just kind of talk to you. And so, uh, as I said uh, earlier, for anyone that's interested, you can check out Jeannie's uh, class. Uh, down below. I know she'll connect with you too while, while you're taking Oh, yes. It. Oh, yes. So, um, I will yeah. definitely. And I, I'm, I'm also on LinkedIn and um, Twitter and all that. And, but I also want to start a pod, uh, not a podcast, I'm sorry, a blog eventually okay. down the road there here. 
took your course and never got to done, but I will. That's, well, <laughs> so, hey, well, then we're going to link that stuff down below. So make sure you connect with Jeannie after this. And so thanks for listening. Jeannie, thanks so much thank for taking you. the time uh, out of your busy day. It seems like the busiest day you have a million things that you're doing. So I <laughs> no, it's okay. It was my pleasure. Time, so. Oh, so. gosh. I'm, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank All you right. so well, much. Thanks. Make sure you say hi to Katie next time you see her, right? Okay, so, uh, I sure will. And by the way, my way yeah. of saying bye or thank you is Ifari Sto. Oh, that is so right. right. You got a little Greek. In you, so you don't know everything there. Oh, <laughs> well, I know Greek better than me too. So, hey, thanks everyone for being here. <laughs> Have a wonderful you. day. You too. Thank you so much.